Cheers, everybody. Welcome back to Bourbon on a Budget. Myself, TJ Pittenger, and Brandon Sinone, and Ben Cock here with you guys again for another episode. We couldn't be more happy to be with you guys. Gentlemen, how are you doing tonight? Doing dandy, TJ. Doing dandy. Doing good. Doing good. Another one. Doing good. <laughs> we are happy to be with you guys Happy to hang out. Hey, if you're listening to this, if you're watching it, if you could do me a favor and click the subscribe button, whether you are on the podcast format that's on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, all those places, or if you're on YouTube watching this on video, if you could hit the subscribe button, thumbs up, we would appreciate it. Uh, if you're on any of those podcast platforms, leave us a five-star review. We would appreciate that as well. Um, if you're on social media, which a lot of our fans and followers and friends are, you can search bourbon on a budget on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. We try to monitor those things pretty quickly. Ben is quickly becoming the Instagram king. And then Brendan and I hold it down pretty well for the Twitter. So hit us up there and we will interact with you. We have a great time on those. Again, search bourbon on a budget. Gentlemen, my plug is done. What are we drinking tonight? I started nosing this too aggressively and I spilled it all over myself. Amateur hour over here. This is Wild Turkey 101 (laughs) all over my face. That's nice. I'm drinking a Wild Turkey 101 too. We'll talk about that later. Oh, (laughs) one final plug though. Um, I'm considering open up a a Tickle Talk. If anyone wants to uh, advise me on how to do a little Tickle Talk, let me know. I actually started a TikTok yesterday, guys. I didn't want to tell you until we got like oh five followers. So we got two followers and four likes in the first day. <laughs> Gangbusters. <laughs> Why did you call it a tickle talk? You don't know That's the word? Called. That's what it's called, man. That's what the kids are calling these days. TJ's just not up. How did the like oldest one among us do start the TikTok, right? Like, how did we let that happen, man? How do you get the bourbon to dance? What was your... How'd you it's figure just, that out? It's all these different little stickers are there. And I can be like, oh, this smells like maple syrup. And then bam, there's a pancake with maple syrup on it. It's really cool. So you guys didn't ask me what I was drinking. No, uh, no one asked. Eh, yeah. No one cares. No one, ca- no no one cares. cares. We've established that um, throughout the first several weeks of this. I'm also drinking Wild Turkey 101. We reviewed this a few weeks ago and we are drinking it tonight. Why are we drinking it tonight, Brendan? We are drinking tonight because we want to, uh, I guess, experiment. This is science that we're about to embark on. Uh, what Wild Turkey 101, the same bourbon, a damn fine, uh, consistent, steady bourbon. What it tastes like in different types of one glasses, but I think more importantly, what it tastes like in different types of, uh, what do you want to call it? Like a, a accoutrements, like with ice, with a little water, neat. Uh, so yeah, that's basically what we're, we're trying to decipher here is what wild turkey tastes like when you mix it or don't mix it we're trying new things everything that we've done on this show i think we've drank um well this is like episode six or seven times two we've probably had close to 20 bourbons now at least 15 because we did some irish stuff too or whiskeys at least um everything we've had on this show so far has been neat there's been no deviation from that there's been no variation from that and tonight we are trying new things. And so we have, like Brendan talked about, we have wild turkey neat. We all three have this in different kinds of glasses. Brendan's using like wine glasses and weird stuff because. No, of- I got a Glencairn here. And then my wife got me. This is like a outdoor Glencairn. So I don't drop it in like, uh, like a little was, kid. Look like a wine glass. Um, you can't tell, but this is the same wild turkey with some, a few drops of water, four drops of water. And then lastly, we have wild turkey 101 with ice. Um, my ice is way cooler than Brendan's, so suck on that. Um, and we are branching out the same temperature, but whatever. Oh, God. TJ, your ice is so cool. <laughs> that that was a great pop. I just, all right, I won't do it again. But we are trying it three different ways, branching out a little bit. Shout out to our guy on Twitter, T Dog, for suggesting this to us. Um, he goes by the handle of Tony Montana. I don't think it's the real Tony Montana, uh, but thank you so much for suggesting this excellent suggestion of what different, what a whiskey can do in different, like Brendan said, accoutre, accoutre, accoutrements. Accoutre, accoutrements. Yeah. I don't know what that means, but I'm assuming that it, it's, uh, it's like, a higher than like, my pay grade, like, so, like side things, like little, like, uh, let's not get canceled. Um, so 
let's jump into this. The way we are typically drinking things on the show is neat. Um, what are Ben, you're a big neat guy, right? You talked about this on the first episode. Uh, mm -hmm. Why, what are the pros to drinking something neat? So I, I traditionally, like you had said, pretty much drink neat uh, exclusively for most of my uh, whiskeys right now. One thing that is, you know, the easiest, you know, kind of check in the box is like, it's the most, um, it's like the most standard. It's, it's completely natural. It's the way that the, the, the stiller, anticipated you drinking it so it's kind of like your baseline and so that's one of the pros um it's definitely in its in its natural form so that's why i drink it like that brendan can you think of any cons to drinking whiskey neat uh, it's certainly if you're new to drinking any kind of liquor with higher proof um that's going to be the most challenging it's going to be the harshest uh that's why people will mix drinks that's why they put stuff on ice we'll get into that but but yeah, that, that's probably the biggest con is that it's the most daunting type of, of drinking of, of any sort of whiskey. Um, that, that's the downside. What about pros? I think it's going to basically mirror what you just said opposite, but I'll keep it with you, Brendan. What are the pros to adding water, adding ice, changing the whiskey outside of just for the newer people? Because obviously like it can it can... Essentially, it, it proofs it down a little bit. So some people may look at that as a con, right? Putting some water in it, putting some ice in it. But what are some pros to the ice and the water in the whiskey? All right, well, let's talk about the water. I put the water in here. I haven't sipped it yet and compared to what neat is. Here's neat. Here's with a little bit of water. Uh, there are some people who are going to say, though, and even like, like bourbon, purists, snobs, whatever, that say a little bit of water uh, actually can open up a whiskey beautifully a lot of time it depends like especially with higher proof ones when it's very oily and dense you can see that a little bit here with the uh i don't know if you guys can see it on, on the camera but with the wild turkey it is higher proof it's at 101 obviously uh and so it can kind of be clingy sometimes so when you put in a little bit of water uh i don't try to think of the science here it either gets the the oiliness to suppress or to come out to the top but whatever it does uh science it it creates sometimes more flavor to kind of come to the top more of the nose. So it kind of unleashes some of the flavors. Uh, so that's one of the pros of, of with water and you kind of experiment and figure out like what the right amount of water is. So it can help you kind of figure out things to your palate uh, for, for ice. Really the, the pro is the con to me. Um, it limits the flavor. It reduces the flavor. Uh, when something's cold, it simply has less taste to it. Um, so, so that's, if you're trying to kind of dull it down a little bit, make it more palatable, uh, ice is really usually the, the key to that. Yeah. Yeah. I would probably go in and say the ice in the water lets you dive deeper into, uh, into the glass. Right. So with like what you were saying earlier was it lets it expand the kind of, cause you're giving more volume for the flavors to expand out. Um, when I'm going back and forth, at least with my tasting, I would typically give an opportunity to add a little bit of water because it brings out different flavors. So specifically with this 101 on my, from neat to water, it brings considerably more of the sweet body, the sweet uh, vanilla, caramel, all those notes like were all really brought to the top for me. So in that aspect, it kind of lets me dive in a little bit deeper than what, you know, you typically could without, you know, adding a little bit of water. And then the ice, I would tend to agree, the ice kind of mellows out a lot of that uh, overly spice, a lot of what people describe as, you know, as heat. So that'll kind of help mellow that down, especially for the newer drinkers. So like I said, there's, we've, we said this a couple times in our show that there's no wrong way to drink whiskey, but uh, those are kind of the three approaches that are commonly associated with you know, drinking whiskey. All right. So one other thing with ice, what I'm holding up here, if you guys are watching on our YouTube is Johnny Walker's White Walker. See what they did there is when Game of Thrones, I don't know if you guys remember, but Game of Thrones did a bunch of Scotch releases. Some were good. Some were pretty awful. This is probably the most awful of all of them. Is one I was most excited about because the bottle's really cool. It's got a Johnny Walker, but with the blue eyes of the White Walker if you're into Game of Thrones. And when you put this, and it's suggested to put this in the freezer, uh, something on the side here comes, I think it's like uh, winter is coming or, or some little uh, slogan. They recommend you to put it 
into the freezer. One, because that cool little thing happens with the, with the graphic change. But two, and this is more important, because it tastes awful. It is, <laughs> Will, it is disgusting. Uh, I can palate almost every type of whiskey I've ever tried up to like after getting like into it uh, and find something at least compelling or, or salvageable with this. This was awful. It's almost like entirely full. I've had it for a couple of years. They want you to freeze it because it is awful. And that's because, again, cold mutes flavor. Which is why they serve shots ice cold. Yes. Right? Like that's why yep. you get shots at, at your local bar freezing cold. The Jaeger they keep in the fridge because they don't want you to taste it. Um, it's why you eat your food hot, right? That's why you let your wine be room temperature. It's why the crappiest beers on earth are served at like 30 degrees. <laughs> so anyway, you, like in, in Germany, they serve their beers warm, right? Yeah. Uh, warm room temperature. Ben and I were, not, not warmed. <laughs> yeah. Ben and I were drinking some uh, pretty heavy stouts um, Sunday night, whatever night you came over, Ben. And we chilled them, but then let them sit at room temperature. So the flavors came out. So you got to let some stuff warm up a little bit. Uh, you guys both talked about water. I want to talk about this before we really jump into like the tasting and the different notes and things that we're jumping into. What is the right amount of water, the suggested amount of water that you specifically would, would put into a water if you were uh, into a bourbon, if you were trying to open it up a little bit? Uh, some nerds will take like a medicine dropper and do that. That's a little bit even, even for me, but you know, if you want to be, precise with it i don't think there's a huge issue it's just you're really getting into your hobby at that point uh usually what i'll do is i have the refrigerator you know the water tap on the refrigerator press it real quick let one thing of water one drop come in uh and that's usually enough to really kind of open it up if anything it may be a little bit too much so for me usually not a not a ton of water to uh to try to open it up there but you know different strokes for different folks yeah i'm i'm of like a very light sprinkle i mean within like four or five drops is, is really plenty, especially when I'm like tasting bourbons, I'm not drinking, you know, a full like two ounce pour. It's like, you know, three quarters of an ounce. It, you go three drops or four drops there. You're, you're definitely changing the flavor profile, at least in my opinion. Um, I don't want to classify things as right and wrong. Um, it's just preferential for me. Another two uh, side notes when we're talking about adding ice and water to, to whiskeys, I would recommend bottled water um, as opposed to like tap water, especially if you have hard water at your house. Um, and then ice can get a little tricky because you don't want to dig down to the bottom of your ice tray to grab something out that's kind of soaked in a lot of the aromas or anything from your refrigerator. So uh, bottled water would be great and fresh ice would also be preference because you're trying not to, you're trying to let the whiskey speak for itself and not, a, not add different flavors from your fridge. So. TJ, TJ, can you hold up your uh, your ice glass uh, for the people making noise so they can see what, what the ice looks like? Because you have a different kind than, than what I have. Yeah, for sure. So my ice, and I've talked about this before and been is spot on. So I, from Target, I think it was like $7.99 or $9.99 or something, bought the um, ice freezing trays. I, I bought two kinds, one, the big square block, and then also this round sphere, this round cube of ice, which I like a ton. This is what I usually do for my old fashions. I don't do this in neat whiskey uh, ever. I, I think I may have done it like once just to kind of like test it, but uh, a really cool ice. I also have a, I do use my faucet, but I have a reverse osmosis um, <laughs> filtration system, like super nerdy. And oh, that, fancy. that I don't mind using to freeze my ice. Like I don't pour that from, um, you know, bottled water or gallon jug or anything like that. Uh, but if you were freezing ice I, and you didn't have some kind of like filtration system on your faucet, I agree with Ben, I would not use, I just wouldn't use just cheap ice out of your fridge or, you know, ice out of your fa like faucet, you know, like the little uh, ice packs that you freeze or anything like that. Because I do think that a lot of times fridge ice tastes weird and will make your whiskey taste like that fridge ice. The ice that I have, the, I know I'm rambling about ice here, um, but the ice I have doesn't change the flavor in a bad way. Like it lets that, like Ben just said, lets it speak for itself. Um, it doesn't taste like, you know, the weird fridge ice. So ben, uh, Brendan, tell me about your weird fridge ice. <laughs> It is weird. It does have a funky, I don't know if it's like a Florida thing or whatever, but like every single refrigerator uh, ice is just, or freezer ice, I guess is 
fairly got a weird funk to it. So look how watered down mine has gotten. I put about five or six ice cubes in there and the ice cubes are almost, I would say 70% melted at this point after like within 10 minutes of getting the, uh, the bourbon into it. TJ again, hold yours up, make a noise. So yeah. see how little it's, and that's the sphere that he's done. And that's, that's yeah. a big deal for, for not much helping. less, much less, obviously a, a solid block of ice is going to melt slower. And that's mm -hmm. another benefit of it. Not only the, no weird fridge ice or freezer ice taste, but uh, mine's melted a lot more. Now, as I'm clanging it around and making noise, it actually just a piece of it just broke off. So it will start to melt a little more, but Brendan and I put ours in the ice at the same time and his has melted significantly faster because we're dealing with some melting ice and we can't just stay on here forever. Let's get into tasting these things. I've been sipping on the one that's neat and it's everything that I remember about wild Turkey. It's, a good pour, uh, you know, it's a solid value. We reviewed it a couple of weeks ago. Um, ben, how many of you drank? Have you only had the neat? Where are you at? I'm going to taste some other things and shut up. You go ahead. Yeah, I'm already deep into this. So I've had a little bit of each of them. And from what I, from my palate, the the neat is, like TJ said, it's very similar to what we had talked about a couple weeks ago. It's a lot of spice, vanilla, caramel. It's complex. It, it's great. I, I enjoy wild turkey 101 a lot. Um, the addition of water, like I was talking about earlier, it really beats down a lot of that spice. So if you think you get to wild turkey 101, you say, Hey, that's a little too spicy for me. This adding a, a couple of drops of water really brings out a lot of the vanilla, at least in my opinion, it muddles down a lot of that heavy cinnamon, clove, anise. And then the ice, it really just really beats the entire thing down. It's not my preferred way to drink it. The water though was pretty pleasant. I was not expecting it to be as good as it was. So that's where I'm at. I, so I'm going back and forth here. This again is the neat one for me. It's wild turkey 101. We all like it. It's got caramel. It's got vanilla. It's pretty standard bourbon. Got a nice little amount of spice to it though. Uh, to me, a little bit of water, what it's done is... This has some, the, the neat one has some sharpness to it and it's not unpleasant necessarily. It's just, I think it's kind of what you'd expect when you're paying 20 to $25 for, for a bourbon at, at that proof at 101, uh, there's going to be some spikiness to it. The, the water tames that to where the finish to me is where the big difference is, where it's almost kind of, I don't want to say muted, uh, but if this is sharp and, and spiky at the end, and I kind of enjoy that, uh, this kind of makes it more rounded uh more smoother uh that spike is is just brought down maybe like 30 percent or so so uh they're both good they're both i would like buy a bottle of either of these bourbons with a little bit more diluted i don't know if i would have the 81 proof standard wild turkey but um you know this is probably like 90 i wish i had an instrument for it. this is probably like 95 proof and um it's good. I like the one one a little bit better, but it's not bad. Um, you want me to try the ice one here? I hate ice in my whiskey. I don't ever do it. Um, here we yeah, go. Cause I'm, cause I'm ready to crap on this ice, but so you go. Oh, are you okay? All right, good. <laughs> I, the, the, no, the nose right now is like nothing. It, it's just water to me. Um, here we go. It needs oh. some syrup and some bitters is what it needs. Um, oh. to bring that flavor back up. Yeah. It's not good. Oh. It's like you talked about with the cold, it, it, it mutes all the flavors. It also dilutes it way down. Like you can see the difference in how light it is compared to where the whiskey started. Oh, I started wow. with, look at that color. That's crazy. Dude. Yeah, That's I started with 101 here on, well, my left, your right, if you're watching this. And I've got, this is lower than 80 at this point, without a doubt. Uh, I've proved this down less than 80 would be my guess. And, and just look at the difference. We talked about the vanilla and the oak and the spice and the caramel that was on this. All of that is gone here. And, and it's been proofed down to almost nothing. And outside of that, um, you're dealing with it being way, way colder. And it's just not going to, those characteristics are even going to be further muted. So it's not only the water that you've mixed with it to proof it down. It's the ice making the flavors and the characteristics and stuff almost unrecognizable can can i make a suggestion here i'm asking rhetorically i'm going to make the suggestion you guys are just gonna to have to deal with it uh if you want the ice like if you want to cool it off a little bit 
but without the water down process that I'm significantly going through and TJ starting to experience now, there are things called whiskey stones or, um, yeah, they're basically like little, little cubes and you can throw them into the whiskey. It cools it off. So it has that impact. I actually like doing that with like, say my Elijah Craig barrel proof. That's really, really hot. Like we're talking like 120, 130, uh, proof. Uh, you go ahead and do that on a summer day and you throw some of the whiskey stones in there. It cools it off. It makes it really enjoyable, really pleasant. Like that to me is, is kind of the sweet spot of what you want when you're trying to cool it off. It doesn't have the condensation though of the ice to where it's watering it down. So if you're trying to maintain that proof and overall flavor, but maybe just taming it a little bit and more so making it cooler for like whatever the conditions are, I would highly, highly recommend that. Uh, I couldn't recommend it enough, actually. I think it's a really good idea if, if you're not wanting to lose any of the flavor from from the, the ice uh, aspect. Now, you still do lose a little flavor from the fact that it's colder, right? So I, we really should have done that. If we had to yeah. do it over again, I probably would have gone out and bought some of those. Or No, anything, don't. Hey, whatever. no, you're doing, you're doing great. No, but, you're good, buddy. But it does. I, I'd like to see kind of what that effect does because you're kind of getting a double – dumbed down with the ice because it not only melts and proofs it down but it also the cold brings it down a little bit too so it'd be interesting to kind of see what just half of that would do um none of us like the ice i i just think it totally ruins everything i like about it if i wanted to just drink to be able to get drunk faster which is not really my mo um, I would just take a shot of wild Turkey one Oh one. I wouldn't prove it down with ice and then have to choke it down. I would just shoot it a lot faster, which I am not encouraging anyone to do, but it seems like a more efficient way to enjoy a drink. That said, if you liked watered down whiskey, that's totally fine. Like that's totally, I don't like it. I don't think Brendan or Ben likes it, but if you like it, drink it watered down. That's all you. Ben, any thoughts here on this? Brandon just had something before I go uh, Ben. Yeah, I was going to say, I think it just depends on where you're at in your journey with, with bourbon too. If you're a year and change into it like TJ is or, or a little bit longer like where Ben is and you appreciate a, a good neat pour, it's going to be far and few between where, where you say, hey, there's this whiskey and I need to add ice to it or even I need to add a ton of water to it. Again, for me, the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof isn't my cup of tea. It's a little bit too hot to where I don't get all the flavors I would like. Adding some water opens it up a ton. Adding some ice in the summertime makes it far more palatable for me, far more enjoyable. So there are examples of it for us. But if you're new into bourbon and are having a hard time with it, ice away, baby. Ice away. Ben, do you have any thoughts on this? Yeah, I, I would say from my sampling tonight, I'm very pleased with the four to five drops of water. I think it performed really well. It didn't depart too much from the true character of the bourbon. Um, the ice really beats it down. It just takes, it takes a lot out of it, you know, because you're getting dilution and temperature change. I would lean more towards if you are, fighting a neat pour i would add water first before straight into the ice and that's just my opinion um but like for example you went out and bought the starter pack that we had talked about a couple weeks ago and that all of mine were at 100 proof and you said man those are all a lot too much alcohol too much burn for me i would immediately say hey let's add a little bit of water we'll proof that down a little bit and then you can kind of dive more into the sweeter notes, the more mild side of, of that bourbon, and you actually get more volume bourbon. So anyway, just my two cents on tonight's three different tastings. Yeah, the I agree with that. The water did not change it in a way that I would say – it didn't change it enough for me to say that I noticed too much. Now, I do think that if we were to go to something – um, like Brendan said, the Elijah Craig barrel proof, something really, really high and hot that, uh, water may actually open some things up. I don't think it changed the wild Turkey enough for me to notice a massive difference. Like if I was going in blind on both these, I, I don't know that I would have pulled, pulled one out from the other. Um, you guys have more refined palates than I do. And so you may have, but I don't know that I would have necessarily, um, if you give the – let's do this. This will be fun. We gave uh, Wild Turkey a seven collectively on the composite. 
what uh, what do you rate in the water and what do you rate in the ice if you had to? The ice is almost uh, unbearable. I mean, that would be like a one. Um, I was going three. I was going to give it a three. I was still getting oh, a little alcohol right. out of it. Are you guys after this? So normally when we finish recording, we have like a couple, like I'll make this night, our, our Tuesday recordings, like a stay up late, play PlayStation and keep drinking whatever I'm finishing off on, on our recording ones. I will dump this out as soon as we stop recording. Uh, the ice is awful. Sorry. And uh, a nice solid maybe five out of uh, six out of ten for the, the watered one. Uh, yeah. I will dump mine out as well. Ben, what are you rating the other? Yeah, water's water's good. Water's a little different. Like it's not it's not bad. It's just different. Um, ice is not enjoyable for me. So a one, a one, come on, one baby. I don't know if it's a one. I mean, it's just not, it's just not for me. It's not my cup of tea. Not your cup of bourbon. Yeah, yeah. it's not tea. Um, yeah, I go with the ice is is for this drink, just not doing it for me. You know, I think that uh, trying something that's maybe barrel proof at like 120, mm. 130, like Brennan said, would be something to consider. Um, the water is not really any worse or better to me and maybe i give it like a 6.8 or something like just really go just slightly down because you're losing a tiny bit of proof um but the bottle also goes farther i guess if you if you well no it doesn't go that much farther if you're just adding like four drops so i, I it's like real a six quick, TG, uh, that sounds about right that's that's fair i i do like that you uh give the will it pot still you gave it a four and it's literally just one point higher than watered down Wild turkey, one. Yeah, I take that back. It's a one. It's a one. <laughs> I convinced them. I just don't. Yeah, I don't like it. It's not good for this one. I don't prefer it. Um, maybe if I let the, uh, maybe if I let this sit and be like fifteen percent alcohol, but it warms up. Maybe I would like that better. But like with the cold and it proofed down, I don't like that. I don't like freezing cold drinks. The other reason. I don't like freezing cold drinks is because I have a chugging problem. I drink things too quickly when it's cold. Like if I'll get like a soda or whatever, and I try not to drink a ton of soda, but I'll get a soda. And if it's ice cold, like things gone in like two minutes, water's the same way. Like I carry this big, huge water thing around all day, drink it in no time flat when it's cold. So when I pour my water every day, I pour it room temperature. I don't put ice in it so that I kind of slow down on it. So I want to drink this too fast, even though it tastes terrible. So anyway, I think we're sticking with our neat or maybe a few drops of water. Um, Brendan is making inappropriate jokes in the chat that uh, if you DM Brendan, he'll tell you uh, what, what he said in the chat that was very um, unsightly. Are we good on our test? Are we good on our experiment, guys? We can move on to our favorite segment of the week. Student purchases. Oh, uh, we don't want to do the uh, the weird random drink. I'll do that. I'll do the. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, we are, we are. Keep it rolling. Right, you you got yours. Going. You start us out. I'm gonna go get all mine. Right. Then go get yours, Brendan. Start us out. All right. Uh, while you're here, Ben, I'm gonna let you decide while TJ leaves. All right. Well, hold got... on. Set up the premise here. We have agreed that we're gonna put in some bullcrap to our whiskey and call it an interesting mix in. That's exactly what we're going to do. I mean, <laughs> because... we want to add a little bit of water. Some people do a, a splash of Coke. I feel like, let's see what a little bit of blank does to the same exact whiskey. If we're being experimental here, you know, that's what college is for, Ben. What... All right, Brendan. So what did you choose for your two experimental <laughs> mix-ins? Lord. All right. I'm holding them up here. Uh, I'm going to let you guys choose. I have lemon juice in one hand. I'd much rather you guys pick that one. But if you wanted to feel so inclined, I got hot sauce, Cholula hot sauce, which uh, on the Scoville is is fairly like, it's like a thousand Scovilles, which isn't uh, too spicy, but it's certainly above average. Uh, spicy. Do, you, do you still have, I'd like to make the executive decision here to decide this myself. I'm sorry, Ben. Uh, do you still have both the wild turkey and the neat and the water? I have the neat poured here. And yes, I have a little bit of the water one. Both. All right. I'm going to do the lemon and the neat one because I re-poured that for this exercise. Uh, and I feel like this will ruin it less. All right. So here we go. Just so you guys can see this. Just a drop, right? Like not much. No. No, that was like two or three drops, but I actually think the lemon just a little bit. We've talked about it before. 
I once tried to do a whole chunk of like a lemon ice cube that my wife had frozen into a whiskey and it made it really interesting initially before it really went off the rails here. Um, this hot sauce now, don't people put hot sauces like in Bloody Marys? Yes. Looks like a nightmare. This yeah. looks like an absolute nightmare. All right. All right. So I have to be honest. I don't know if you guys can see this on camera, but it's coagulating in a very weird way. Um, yeah, kind of. I'm not yeah. feeling great about that one. Yeah, I didn't want to hold it anymore because this is a work computer and that'd be bad. Well, right, I'm gonna, you, while you I'm do really sit. Yeah, yeah, I've got. Uh, okay, if I like whiskey and soda, so this isn't too crazy. Our other option was milk because I don't really have a lot to drink in this house, so we're just doing like a splash of Gatorade, just like a. This is the this is the neat. We're doing a splash of Gatorade. And see how I go. Ben, what do you got? What flavor Gatorade? That's very important. Um, Glacier Cherry. So cherry, oh cherry, <laughs> cherry, cherry, cherry is a well. A first of all, flavor. He's, first of all, good. it's white. Right. So right. it's not going to make like my Gatorade purple. Um, second of all, cherry is a flavor that you find in bourbon from time to time. So, mm -hmm. um, Brit, Ben, what do you got? I was really considering just pouring in a rye to my bourbon, but I feel like I would not be able to get away from that. So um, I have some La Croix right here. That was great. Uh, La Croix. And, I think it's La Croix. La Croix. And uh, so I'm going to put some some little seltzer water. I got passion fruit, La Croix, and uh, just a little splash. I don't anticipate this being good, but... It's for the show. Oh my gosh, it smells terrible already. Uh, oh, mine does smell like barf. Mine smells like puke. <laughs> okay, <laughs> not bourbon. a great start. I thought we were supposed to re reinforce, and there's no wrong way to drink bourbon. Yeah, well, no, this, is, this is not the result that we're coming up with. Yeah, okay, I think we're gonna figure that there is a wrong way. The lemon one uh, on the nose is actually... oh, it's a nightmare. Oh, <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> don't do this. Lemon's actually pretty good. Um, smells smells delightful. It's got a get to your hot sauce. Get to your no one cares about your lemon. Get to I'm the hot sauce. I'm really delaying the hot sauce. Hey, let me do the lemon real quick for science. Damn, the acidicness of the lemon. I think and it wasn't a ton in there. Um, that really muted a lot of the flavors. It's not bad. It just tastes like a generic bourbon. Uh, it really like undercut kind of the wild turkey, like caramel and vanilla and, and spice. Uh, hot sauce, damn! This hot sauce has not. It's there's still like I could see two drops in there. It looks like two testicles in my. Just drink, drink it. Unfortunately. Just drink it. If you want to make, it, it actually tastes mixed. like nothing. It tastes like nothing different because it's it's so. Uh, it's separated from the the bourbon like the the hot sauce has been pushed to the bottom of the glass. So I couldn't even really taste the hot sauce in this. Can you swirl it and then take another sip? I'm trying to, I've been swirling it. It's not doing anything, dude. Swirl harder, bro. If you guys want to make mixing ice and bourbon way more appealing, throw some Gatorade in it and see how bad that is. You'll All be right. really let's enjoying see. the bourbon with ice. Let's, let's give it a shot. The, the hot sauce broke and didn't work correctly. So I'll, I'll uh, do a shot of this. I'll do a shot of this at the end after you guys do your uh, do your tastings. The more I'm thinking about it, though, the Gatorade here essentially just made this a whiskey sour. Like that's what a whiskey sour is. Is like Gatorade is essentially sweet and sour mix. So I'm thinking that this isn't going to be the best sipper, but it's basically I just made a mixed drink. So we'll see. I'm, I'm thinking that's the anti hangover drink. Oh, there you go. You're, you're getting those Ooh. electrolytes in there. It's impossible for you to get hung over with that. And the hair of the dog. Yeah. There Maybe I just did something here. So here we go. Yeah. All right, here we Try go. it out. I had a bunch of friends in high school get in trouble for uh, putting vodka in their Gatorade and uh, drinking it during the day, and they all got suspended for two weeks. You had a lot of 21 year olds in high school? That's the reason, <laughs> there's a reason why they were suspended then. The Gatorade Wild Turkey 101. Not bad. It just tastes exactly what it what it said. Like it tastes like an alcoholic uh, Gatorade. Is all. It, it's not. It's not the most palatable. I think if I would have gone with the lemon lime, which I have in the uh, pantry, but didn't want to go get. If I'd have gone with lemon lime Gatorade as opposed to um, Glacier Cherry, I think it would have just tasted like a uh, like a like a whiskey sour, which would have been fine. Um, but it's not especially good. I'll take one more sip while we're on here. 
yeah, I don't like it. Um, again, I, I just talked with you guys about like chugging cold drinks and I want to chug that Gatorade and the uh, whiskey kind of hits me in the back of the back of the throat and it's not the best. So, uh, Ben, how is your, uh, LaCroix? Oh, oh it's a nightmare. Definitely a nightmare. Don't do it. Don't do it. Not good at all. Like a shot of soda. They say a shot of soda and it's not bad. Right. Well, this is passion fruit. And I think that's really killing me because even the just, I've had it just, just this passion fruit and it's not that good. So I have a tangerine LaCroix and maybe I should have grabbed that one. I didn't know. I, I didn't know. And I chose wrong. There was nothing about this choice. That's good. Brendan, make some noise because I think you're trying to show some people uh, and please describe it for those listening what you've got going on in your cup. Yeah, so Ugh. you guys can see this on YouTube. It's too little. I mean, I don't want to see it. It just looks like <laughs> two testicles in a drink. I don't know how else to describe it. It's two hot sauce testicles in my uh, wild turkey. Take a shot. Let's go. Here we go. Ready? Why is it stuck on me? Brendan, say something, please. Um, Hang on. I'm digesting it. It's not terrible. It's weird. No. It's it bad. It's bad. Honestly, I just gave it a little bit more of spice at the end. That did almost nothing. That's crazy. No, that doesn't make any sense at all. Well, I think we have come to the conclusion that uh, don't add Gatorade or uh, passion fruit LaCroix to your whiskey. If you're hanging out with Brendan, you may get a little lemon juice or a little uh, hot sauce in yours, and, and we'll kind of see how that goes. Um, are any of these things something you would suggest to someone? I, I would toy around with the lemon idea in some capacity, but I still haven't mastered it yet, so uh, probably not for now. Um, okay, now we really will go to our favorite segment of the week, now that Brendan's weirdness has um, officially ended. With him. Hey, thank you for playing with me, guys. That was actually fun thank you for indulging my, my weirdities oh i wish i had a playstation so i could kick your butt in, in ncaa tonight to make up for bro that. you have no idea how bad I was <laughs> ass. you have no idea don't even go Dude, there don't i even... i would kill you so God. um ben what are you pursuing play playstation what are you pursuing this week what have you purchased what's going on in your world what do you have that i can eventually get for you like within the next week or two like what is it you're looking for now yeah. Um, so I purchased and I received the Michter's Barrel Strength Rye. And man, it is good. We drank this together, TJ. That was, and I mean, that was mine last week. Like everyone knows that I gave that to you. Right, right. But it was, I now have it. <laughs> so I have received it this week. So it was great. This was this was highly, highly recommended. This blew me away last night. So I would uh, definitely buy this if you can. It's a little hard to find, but it's worth pursuing and purchasing. And if that's not what the segment's about, I don't know what is. Brendan, what about you? Uh, I got the pipe dream. Uh, who does the pipe dream? I'm blanking on it right now. I got Red, Tabasco. Redwood Empire. That's it, Redwood Empire. I talked about it on the last one. I decided to go ahead and take the take the plunge there, went to ABC. It was on sale, I think for like $35. So about $5 off what it normally is. Got my ABC points for it. I have not cracked it open yet, but that was my pursuit from last week. It was purchased this week. Uh, as we now move into another pursuit. I don't know. I heard that there's a, a Jack Daniels bottled in bond that may be in the works. So that'd be something I would, I would play with. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe we pursue that if it's at the right price. We'll see. Have you had any of the Jack Daniels barrel proof product yet? I've had the single barrel and I find it to be delightful, although a little bit overpriced. And maybe we could do a review on that because I think it's actually like a really nice one for beginners. Uh, but I have not gotten the barrel proof. I saw that it does uh, reside in a Win Dixie in Tallahassee, like at mm. $60. I haven't taken the plunge yet. Um, I've heard good things about it. Have you tried it, Ben? No, I want to get a bottle of it. So, okay. TJ, get on that. <laughs> maybe I can maybe um, maybe I can go to the Win Dixie. The Win Dixie is kind of interesting. It's not in a great area in Tallahassee, and That's good. yeah, you go there and you find some cool stuff sometimes, including like Blanton's like at seventy dollars and Eagle Rare like at thirty five. What are you gonna do? Brent yeah. and I are are. It seems we've had plans. Um, we've had plans 
to do this several times and um, the COVID gods keep striking our plans down, but FSU baseball season has not had a lot of breaks. It's a weekend series coming up. I am coming up for the game on Saturday and Brendan and I are supposed to get together. So maybe we will, uh, maybe we'll don the wind Dixie together and uh, see some what, bourbon hunting. Ooh, see yeah. what treasures we can find. Maybe we really piss my wife off and go up to Thomasville on uh, Saturday night after the game. And I'll just come back Sunday morning. <laughs> um, so anyway, pursuit and purchases though. Let's get back to that. Um, I purchased, it's not a whiskey guys. It is a whiskey off of Ben's face. Please zoom. I don't know why he's on mute. I don't know why you would do that. A whiskey glass that was suggested to me by a buddy that I shouted out last week. His name is Joe. Listens to the pod. Great guy. If you are ever around him, have him buy you a drink. He's a great guy. Um, but a Norlin glass. I don't know why zoom flips to the other person while we're on mute, but this is what I purchased for the week. A Norlin glass. What do you guys think about this in looking at it? It looks really cool. So what's the the upside of it, though? Like, it's supposed to be Glen Karen y kind of uh, eliminating vapors, smelling, but not Glen Karen looking? Yeah, so it's a Glen Karen glass inside of another glass so that your hand isn't making contact with it, uh... and it eliminates the heat transfer and has a little bit of a wider rim and helps with some of the flavor profiles. It also comes with which my wife was very uh, eye rolly about this with a nice polishing glass, um, which is great. Gets rid of fingerprints and is beautiful. So this is my most recent pursuit. What do you guys ben, think about this glass? Ben's Ben looks unimpressed by it, to be honest. Fake news. <laughs> fake, fake news. <laughs> Glenn Karen all the way, baby. <laughs> ben is a jerk. Ben, in all fairness, Ben is very new into the Glenn Karen game, so you're trying to get him to jump into this weird other hybrid thing. And I yeah. get it. Ben's not ready to make that plunge yet. Glenn's for life, baby. <laughs> so I'm not anti Glenn Karen by any means. I actually have a Glenn Karen with our logo on it. Um, but I was suggested to try this. And I'm going to tonight. Would you guys like to experience my first taste out of this glass? What are you, what are you drinking out of it? That's the real question. Mm -hmm. What are we drinking out of? What, do you, what would you drink out of it, Brandon? What would you drink first? Oh, let me see. Maybe like a Blanton's? You knew from our pre-production meeting what <laughs> was going to be called. No, I guess. Really called him out on that one. I guess. Um, so <laughs> I will have to find something new. No, we will go with the blends. We will go. We want to do a good pour. And man, I'm getting low on this. Um, we want to go with a good pour for our first time. I remember my first time. So we are going. Is it a good pour? With, we are going with blends. A dump date of 12, 13, 19. Letter in with the rider down on the horse. That's that letter in into our Norland glass. So it's the letter N you said? Letter N. Oh, that's the worst one. Yeah, it is. Um, also, did so, you spend $200 on that bottle like I did on my first blends? I did not. I got Good, it at retail not, at $63. Good. 63 Good. bucks. Um, I gotta say, it looks really cool in that glass. It does. It's a neat looking pour. Uh, literally neat looking pour. Um, no ice, no water added. Um, smells like Blanton's. And for our first sip ever out of the Norland glass, oh, the legs on the inside of it are great because you see through the glass at the second glass. Now it looks great. Let's see. Does it make it taste better? Well, I didn't have anything to compare it to, so I didn't I didn't pour it in a regular glass. Seems uh, like a it, future episode. More content, baby. It Sorry, definitely definitely tastes better than this. <laughs> this <laughs> ice down mess that Ben made me drink tonight with his show idea. Um that was no, that was Brandon's <laughs> idea. Dude, I that can't do this crap. Was Tony that was, that was T Dog's idea. Yeah. yeah. T Dog. Um Jeez. come on, T Dog. 
No, it's good. I mean, I mean, it's blends. You know, it's going to be good. You know, if you drink it out of a plastic cup, but it is good. Let me see. Ha- have you considered maybe putting a little Chalua in there? I think it's Chalula, and no. I, I used to think Loki. I thought this next to this lady was a parrot for a really long time, and then I became an adult and realized it's just peppers. Dude, you are the most awkward person that I've ever been around in my life with your uh, with your parrot pepper lady. It's good. I like the glass. I like it's a little heavier than a Glencairn. So let me hold my Glencairn up real quick. Let me feel it. Oh, here we go. Let me. I do like you probably get like more of like the heftiness from the from the the Norlin glass though. It seems like more like the what you would do with a normal whiskey glass, I guess, and kind of give you that. That's the one thing I don't like about the Glen Cairn. It just feels so dainty and. and I feel fragile. if you're insecure, if you are insecure drinking out of a Glen Cairn, then you have to it is compensate. Dainty. It is. You dainty. have to compensate and add some girth to your Norlin glass. So. Also, I got two kids that are under three years old, and. Uh, Having these dainty little glasses around is dangerous at all times. This one, a little thicker, a little hardier, a little. Let's see. So try it out of this one. Let's try it out of both. Yeah, drop drop both on the ground. See what happens. Couldn't hear what I was drinking. Um, I'd say that's a uh, six out of ten. <laughs> Quick review. Seven point five. Yeah, out of the oh, board. Put it on the board. Yeah. Yeah. 20, 25%, 25% better. Um, that was not 25%. <laughs> six and a half. Let's not really get into this. Yeah, yes, six. You're right, you're right. Six to seven and a half is 25% more. <laughs> Wrap it up, music. Let's go. We're starting to do yeah. math equations. Come on. So, Norlin Glass, uh, we'll take your money too if you'd like us. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make Ben, we'll, I'll crush every one of Ben's Glen Karen's. I don't even, I'll break it with his Mictor's Toasted Barrel Rye. Or uh, barrel strength rye. So, um, guys, do you have any closing thoughts before we get out of here? Any like shout outs or anything crazy going on? Or, or um, if not, I'll just wrap it up and we'll go. What? I, uh, exciting going uh, on? Uh, five star review on iTunes. You got to ask for it. People won't do it. Uh, we've got a nice amount of following so far. We want to keep expanding that. So please, uh, one, we appreciate that people have done it already. Two, if you want to drop us a five star review, that's that helps. I mean, any review really, but five star. Uh, it's preferable, and if you do it with an actual question, I, I think we'll we'll answer some questions on this podcast. So yeah, go for it. Uh, five star reviews with a question, please, and thank you. Yeah, if you guys have a specific topic you want us to do, um, we would love to get some ideas. So send some uh, topic ideas over for a show. Yeah, we got this one off of a, a follower, a fan on Twitter. Appreciate your support, and uh, if you've got good idea, if your ideas don't suck. We'll consider them. If they suck, we'll still consider them, but probably not do them. Stay t- tell tell you they suck. Sorry. Hey, we had an idea to do X, Y, Z, and it sucks, so we're not doing it. But maybe in the future. Uh, stay tuned for part two of this episode where we review. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. All right, here we go. Oh. Old Forster 100. Uh, Old Forster 100 is steadily becoming like something that people are like, hey, this is a really good value. We're going to put that to the test next episode. So if you have Old Forester 100 uh, readily available in your collection or at an ABC or any other liquor store near you, sub $25, I really recommend you go ahead and get it and try it with us next week or this week. Woo, almost nailed it. Damn. I've talked about this before. There's nothing I enjoy more than drinking a bottle of bourbon, trying and tasting a bottle of bourbon with a review to watch. Again, we're doing all of this on a budget. So go to your local ABC, your local Total Wine, your local liquor store, and pick up a bottle of Old Forester. They're not paying us to say that, but you will enjoy reviewing it with us for not very much money, 20 22 23 bucks. It's a, Like I said, it's double points at ABC right now. So if you're ABC and you're trying to get points to get in their vault, it's a good deal for you. Uh, guys. Another fantastic week. I'm excited to review this old Forester 100 with you. Check us out on social media, Bourbon on a Budget. And I'm going to enjoy the rest of this blend. And I'm going to pour, oh, i got to get this tasting even better. Pour this back into the Norland glass and we will be set. Guys, for myself, TJ Pittenger, Britton Sinone, and Ben Cock, this was Bourbon on a Budget. We'll see you next week. Cheers.